Hi everybody, it's Darcy Lindale from Lippy Girl Makeup and I'm here today to film the fifth installment in the Cosmetic Chemistry 101 series and today's topic is the INCI naming system used in cosmetics and makeup products and that's anything from shampoos to your lipstick. And so when you're reading those ingredient um, packages, hopefully they'll make a little bit more sense to you uh, after listening to this video. Uh, if you've missed the first four videos, I'll put their topics and the links right here so you can click uh, Pick those if you want to watch those before or after this video or if I reference them in this video and it leaves you wondering, there's the links right there. Um, I'll also put a blog entry below in the description box and that will be important for today's topic because I'm not going to be able to cover the entire naming system in one video. In fact, I kind of want to make it short and sweet and so you guys can see the links if you want to research further and have kind of a broad picture idea of this naming system and so when you read uh, sometimes it just gives you a little bit of confidence so when you approach those packages and read the ingredients it isn't completely overwhelming um, and you can try to make sense of it and feel your way through it so let's get going um, as you guys know I'm a chemist I'm a trained chemist and some of you maybe took chemistry in high school and university and learned the chemistry way of naming things which is called the IUPAC system the International Union for Pure and Applied Chemistry. Even the name says, bah, this is important, right? So this is what we learn in school, how to name chemicals. Um, now those chem like the thing about naming chemicals and the chemistry system is we don't care where those chemicals came from. Like we're just counting carbons and looking for functional groups and naming organic compounds. Um, the IUPAC system doesn't really, wouldn't really be great to apply to cosmetic uh, packaging because consumers are concerned about, well, is this natural or is this manufactured? Is this um, a natural derived chemical or is this a human made chemical? And of course that's very valid. And so the IUPAC system, when it comes to um, Cosmetics is just kind of thrown aside, and there's this group called the PCPC, uh, the Personal Care Products Council, and their job, and they're just like a self-regulating body in the cosmetic world, and their job is basically to make the INCI system or write the INCI dictionary, and I may disagree or dislike some of their ways of doing things, but I mean, they have a difficult job, right? Um, because cosmetic ingredients um, kind of break down into different categories, and one of those categories is natural ingredients, and those ingredients uh, have to have names that people would recognize worldwide, and uh, we don't want to show any kind of uh, favoritism towards English or French or we want this to be used in Japan, we want it to be used in Australia and Canada and the United States um, and the it, throughout the EU so um, and that's where INCI actually is used so for natural ingredients ones that are just coming straight out of an organism like uh, a plant or you know beeswax we're just gonna give those their Latin names Okay, so you've probably really seen these names quite a bit on uh, the back of things because we also are allowed within the INCI system to kind of put the real names in brackets. So you'll see like beeswax or Sarah Alba, probably Sarah Alba, and then in brackets it will say beeswax. So Sarah Alba is the Latin name for beeswax, and then we help you out by putting it in brackets so that that's beeswax. Um, so those ones are a little bit easier because we do try to help you um, with the natural ingredients. Where I find the INCI naming system a little bit annoying, um, and by the way, way, I don't know if I said this, the INCI naming system stands for the uh, International Nomenclature of Cosmetic Ingredients. So it is just for cosmetic ingredients. And the uh, names that get kind of confusing are when we get into things like um, fatty acids, esters, and alcohols. And one of the reasons why this video, in fact, took me so long to upload is because I would be trying to think about how I could teach you the INCI naming system for these things without actually going into too much chemistry. And what I decided was I would break today's lesson up and just tell you the ICN 
I uh, naming system today and then next week I'll do an installment and I'll explain to you what alcohols, fatty acids and esters are. I thought that would be a really good way of doing it. Um, so uh, because I this otherwise today's video was going to be like half an hour long as I tried to explain all these different families of chemicals. So that's kind of um, the area that INCI gets a little confusing is in these chemical family groups and these chemical family groups are derived from you know oils and plants but they aren't the whole coconut oil for instance they're just um, one fatty acid taken out of that oil and again I will go over the difference between fatty acids esters and alcohols as well as I will tell you the structure of oils next lesson and so I will tell you exactly why they kind of require their own naming but in the IUPAC system that you would have learned if you went to high school and took chemistry uh, taught you to count the number of carbons and then look at the functional groups or the atoms attached to those carbons and name it that way and the INCI system follows that they just have a totally different naming system and I don't know why they did that so a really good example is octane right which is what we would say for eight carbons in IUPAC they just for whatever reason decided not to use octane and they were like okay let's use caprylic and so if you ever hear caprylic acid it's really just um, octanoic acid in IUPAC naming and I don't know if that helps you at all but basically they have counted carbon molecules or Adam's sorry, and then assess their own naming system, which is totally different than the chemical naming system. And if you ever like go to the PCP website or uh, listen to their reasons why they use this numbering system, they say their numbering system is shorter and easier to understand than the chemical naming system. But I don't know exactly how naming octanoic acid caprylic acid is easier for you. I mean, octanoic acid, oct for us rings eight, doesn't it? You know, everyone knows about an octagon, uh, but they, they made things a little fancier. Uh, and a lot of those roots come from, you know, the source that we normally find these fatty acids or these carbon chains from. And so, um, what I'm going to do in my blog is I will list the common um, IUPAC names, like, you know, numbers, and then beside it I will put the INCI name system. Uh, but basically, there's no, there's no way to know the INCI naming system unless you memorize it. And even me, like when I was going to make the labels for Lippy Girl lipsticks and, you know, blushes and lip products, I mean, I found myself looking up the INCI dictionary because it is the only way to do it. You're never going to learn the INCI naming system. You can kind of know the ins and outs. You can kind of know their numbering system. Um, you can know the common ones. Um, the other thing is the dictionary just gets bigger and bigger and bigger because before, like if a company wants to use an ingredient for their cosmetic product, they literally have to, before they can write their labels, um, present that chemical or that um, ingredient to the PC, 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 and uh, enter that ingredient in the INCI dictionary before they can include it. So the dictionary is always growing as more and more ingredients are added to cosmetics. And um, a lot of the times the people that are introducing these new ingredients uh, to their cosmetics are just making up the names or suggesting names that are then being accepted. Um, so there's there's no way to know the INCI naming system without memorizing it. And what I would suggest is that if there's certain ingredients that you don't know or whatever, there are so many great databases. And in fact, a lot of them I'm going to link in my blog. Uh, so you can look them up, um, that you do look it up because um, 
a lot of times I have girlfriends who just don't read their ingredients because they feel like they're in school again and they're like, I don't understand it and I don't want to read it. And I think that's the worst thing you can do. Um, the nice thing is, is um, when a company is only using natural ingredients, then you'll only see Latin names and uh, things that you really understand on the ingredients. Um, unfortunately, a lot of natural ingredients are extracts from those oils, and so the, then you'll start seeing, um, you'll see some, like a lot of the times, like dodecanol, which is an alcohol taken from coconuts, or caprylic acid, um, again taken from coconuts. They look like they might be chemicals because they're not listed, like they're not they're not Latin names, but they are actually just taken from coconut oil or taken from, uh, they're just extracted from a plant. So um, the best thing to do is to find these databases and uh, look up the ingredients you don't know and just kind of get a little bit more educated. Um, the, the nice thing is with INCI is that if you travel throughout the world or whatever, this is a unit, uh, most countries or a lot of countries um, just follow an INCI. So if you um, if you do kind of feel your way through it, if you do know the most common ingredients, um, you can just feel your way through it most of the time. And the bad ingredients like parabens and stuff like that, if you know their names in the INCI naming system, you can identify them in any label. So I'm going to, in my blog, make sure that I have the common, a link to a table of the common natural ingredient names, um, as well as a link to um, a table that will show you, or actually I might even just type up the table uh, for the numbering system that INCI system uses. And I will have also links to all the ingredient databases that I've ever used. So if I've ever seen an ingredient, I'm like, whoa, what's that? Um, I will show you the databases that I use to look those up. And I think that that's kind of the best way to start. Um, and not take it too seriously. Obviously, don't take a course in cosmetic naming uh, just to try to figure it out. But uh, I think that will give you a good base. Next week's video is going to be about fats and about oils and all the ingredients we derive out of oils so it will be about fatty acids and alcohols and esters and it'll be an interesting one I, I'm actually a little nervous uh, about it because it, it it is a little bit chemistry it is a little bit involves carbon and carbon bonding so it will be a good one so thanks for watching today's episode um, Please subscribe and, and watch all my Cosmetic Chemistry 101 videos, and I'll talk to you guys later. Thanks so much. Okay, bye.